And hello everyone, welcome back to another Love 2D tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, we did this. So just Pac-Man, Pac-Man moves, and Pac-Man is about to eat this pellet here. Pop, as you can see. But it's a very boring game because we're not doing anything. So why don't we move Pac-Man? Now I'm just going to delete that and here I'm going to go underscore G uh, dot food and I'm going to make that equal to an object and then I'm going to say food dot X and here I'm going to say food dot eaten and now these two are both objects. But just to show you that both of these methods work, let's actually go x is equal to 600 and eaten is equal to false. You can do it like this as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Now here we can say food.eaten and here we can also say food.eaten. The game should still work perfectly fine and here we should also just say and here as well both of these two places food.x now the game should still work perfectly fine if you run it if pac-man reaches the food palette right here it should pop disappear let's see it does cool now why didn't we try and move pac-man ourselves because currently we're just moving it with every update which is kind of boring so let's try and move it ourselves so first, I would like to be able to tell Pac-Man when to move forward. Now, usually Pac-Man would move forward on his own, but I would like to move Pac-Man forward only when I tell Pac-Man to move forward. So let's do that. So here I'm going to say if, whoa, if love dot keyboard dot is down, and I'm going to say the letter A. Then I want to basically move Pac-Man backwards. So Pac-Man, oh no package, Pac-Man dot X is equal to Pac-Man, oh, Pac-Man dot X minus one. And that should be dot X. I'm going to comment this out just so that doesn't, or let's actually delete it, we don't need it. Now, basically we're saying if this, if the A key is pressed, because if it is down, so if it is being held in as down, do this. That's what we're saying. So if the keyboard key is pressed, there are better ways to do this than what we are doing. But for right now, I think that's perfectly fine. It's not too complex or anything. Now, Pac-Man doesn't move, but as soon as I press the A key, it moves backwards, which we don't really want, but we want to move it the other way around. So let's actually go here and say else if, and we can just copy this. And let's put A, B, let's put D there. And D will move Pac-Man to the right. So we want to just copy this and paste. Now we can just make that a plus. Now you'll notice we made Pac-Man here, we added that dot wider. So we want to move Pac-Man up and down as well. So let's actually do that. I'm going to copy this. I'm just gonna paste it two more times and I'm going to make this W and I'm going to make this S. And now we can say Y instead of X, like that. And this should be minus. And let's see what we get. Now we can move Pac-Man any way we want because we have control over Pac-Man. If we try and eat this pellet, it still gets eaten. But you'll notice if I press A and W at the same time, it doesn't really move up and down at the same time or up and left at the same time. So how do we get around that problem? Well, we just, instead of saying else if, we just say if, and we just add our end here. As simple as that. So just end, 
and here we can say in. So we just add our individual if statement here. So instead of saying else if, where only one of those can be executed, we're saying if, meaning all of these can be executed all at once without a problem. So now if I run this, you'll notice I'll be, I'm able to move up and down at the same time, as you can see right here. And that's something you should take note of, because sometimes in your game you want that to be something you can do. But sometimes it's not. So you should be able to kind of figure out which one you want for your game. So you can know if you should use an if statement or an if else statement. Cool. Now what if you wanted to rotate Pac-Man? Because I know in the real game he really rotate that much. He either looks up or he looks down. But what if we wanted to do that? What if, if we wanted to rotate Pac-Man slowly if we wanted to move around? Because let's say this is the normal Pac-Man. We want to make a Pac-Man that can kind of just do everything. Well, that's not too difficult. So you'll notice here we have two angles, the X angle and the Y angle. Or the X angle, it's just angle one and angle two. Now we need to change this if we want to rotate Pac-Man because you'll notice if we make this two and in this six, Pac-Man will know we will now be rotated, as you can see, right, like that. So let's try and rotate Pac-Man. So I'm going to go here and say, I'm just going to copy this, really. And now I want to, if the user presses down, so that's the down arrow on the keyboard. If they press down, we want to basically take this angle right here and we actually want to modify it a little bit. We're going to create maybe this Pac-Man right here and say angle, I'm going to just say angle one is equal to one and then angle two is equal to six. And that's what we have here. So one and, actually it's one and five, not one and six, my bad. Like that. I'm just going to attach it to Pac-Man here. So Pac-Man will now have two more properties, angle one and angle two, like that. Now what we want to do is we want to change the angle one and angle two here. So I'm going to go like that. And let's do this and maybe make this angle two. Now let's just try and see how it works. Now we can't really see anything happening. And actually, you know why this didn't work? It's because we never assigned angles here. My bad, I should have done the, all of this from the start. So there we have angle one, and now we can make this angle two. Now, if we were to run again, as you can see, Pac-Man spins. But it's, it's a little fast, you know, because we can't really control where the spin ends. It's too fast for us to actually figure out. So what can we do to make this slower? Well, we can actually just say, math.py times dt. And this is where dt comes in real handy because now we can slow it down of a lot. As you can see here, it's a lot slower. Now, if we want to basically add more here, we can just say else, eh, I'll say if I mean, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to say up. It's going to contain the same code, but now instead of being plus, it's going to be minus. Meaning I can now move either up or down. As you can see here, everything still works. Currently, the angle you keep it on, they won't really change which way it moves if you press W, S or D, but you could change that if you wanted to. But it's a little bit more of the scope of this video. But yeah. That's some basics on actually moving things in your game using your keyboard. So getting keyboard input. There are multiple ways to get keyboard input and we're going to discover those ways when we create the games. But for right now, I think this is more than enough to cover what we need. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next Love2D tutorial.